Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going through the topic of momentum. So here's a few things that we want to get through and we'll get right into it. So momentum is uh, present in any moving object, okay? Any moving object has momentum and the reason for that is because momentum is calculated by multiplying mass to the velocity of the object, okay? So you've got um, momentum equals mv, m for mass and v for velocity. And because velocity is a vector quantity, so is momentum. And we've got to take a look at what the units for momentum is. And hopefully you guys by now have the capacity to uh, formulate the units for anything that you calculate. Um, so that's going to be a very useful skill for you. So we're going to do that now. Um, so for example, if we've got uh, momentum, um, being mass times volume, all you have to do is figure out the individual units of what you're multiplying. Mass is in kgs and velocity is in meters per second. Um, so then what you do have now is mass or kilograms times meter squared. And what you then get is kilograms meters divided by seconds or you can convert that to this format um, and therefore that would be the unit for momentum um, and this is really just simple rearrangement of um, equations and so if you don't know how to do this I would strongly encourage you to learn it will only take a few hours for you to really learn how to rearrange formulas and etc because it's going to be um, a very 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 useful skill for you um, it'll make life a lot easier uh, so basically you've got uh, kilograms um, here that is the unit for momentum now a change in momentum is called impulse okay so for example if you've got an object A that has an initial initial momentum of let's say 100 and a final momentum of 50 then you can see that uh, the momentum has decreased by 50 so that change in momentum is 50 which is also um, known as impulse okay and so that change in momentum is impulse and the impulse is in Newton seconds as the formula um, so let's take a look at that into in, in a bit more depth and sort of derive the formula for impulse and sort of get a better understanding of what it is right so one way you can think about it is the uh, the the change in momentum so you've got final momentum minus initial momentum that can be a formula um, but you can uh, put that into the form of an equation right so for example you could go um, the initial momentum and the final momentum as um, m for the mass of the object assuming that the mass is going to be the same of an object uh, what's going to change is the velocity of course um, mv2 2 for the final velocity minus mv1 which is the initial velocity and that will give you impulse which is as I said before the change in momentum and that makes sense because this is the change in momentum um, now another way we can take a look at this is in the format of using force and how we're going to do that is we're going to start off by going F equals MA okay which is Newton's second law and so if you go force equals mass times acceleration 
What is acceleration exactly? Well, it's change in velocity divided by change in time, right? So you can implement that into formula. So you've got mass times change in velocity divided by change in time. So then what you get is mass times change in velocity divided by the change in time equals force. And so if you were to rearrange that further, you get mass times the change in velocity equals force times the change in time. But what is this? Mass times a change in velocity. That's exactly the same as a change in momentum. Because mass times a change in velocity is exactly the same as mass times velocity 2 minus mass times velocity 1. Because remember, this is just calculating the change in the momentum, which is exactly what impulse is. And so you can find that, given that change in momentum, that's impulse. Another way you can write that out is force times the change in time. Um, so we've got two formulas here that you need to learn. One is this here, change in momentum is equal, equals to the force times change in time. Or you could use this formula here, which is simply just calculating uh, final momentum minus initial momentum, which is again the change in momentum, which is impulse. So impulse, just to summarize, is a newton second equals either F times change in time, or you could also use the formula um, mv2 minus mv1. Okay, so that is the two equations that will be quite important for you when it comes to impulse. Um, the other thing that is quite important really is that the momentum of a system is going to stay constant, uh, the total momentum of course, and we call that the conservation of momentum, sort of like the conservation of energy. So if you've got a collision, let's say, between object 1 and object 2, uh, the total momentum before the collision will always equal the total momentum after the collision, and that can be quite important when you go through various examples um, of past papers, so just be aware of that. So I thought before finishing up, I would go through some example questions with you. Um, so here, the object experiences a force of 5 newtons for 2 seconds, determine its velocity afterwards. Now, velocity, momentum, impulse, all these things are vector quantities. So what you have to understand is you need to be very careful with the directions. And so, for example, you can say, okay, well, if it's if a force is going to the right-hand side, I'm going to use a positive sign. And if the force is going in the other direction, I'm going to use a negative sign. Now, you could go the other way as well. You could go right-hand side as minus and the, you know, the left-hand side as plus. But um, we're just going to go with this for now. So what that means is this 4 meters per second velocity which is the initial velocity, well that's a positive sign. Now anything going against that is going to be a negative sign. So this force here of 5 newtons, well technically it's negative 5 newtons from now. And the mass obviously, that's not vector, that's just the scalar quantity, so that remains as 2 kg. So that's really, really important. If you screw up these signs, then you're not going to arrive at the right answer. So here we can already tell that uh, we can determine the impulse, right? Because they give us force, and then they give us time. And remember, impulse is the um, change in momentum, which is also equivalent to force times the change in time. So we've got force being negative 5, and you multiply that by 2 seconds, which will give you negative 10 newton second, which is the impulse. But uh, what we can also determine is the fact that impulse is equivalent to mass times velocity 2, which is the final momentum, minus the initial momentum, which is the change of momentum, which is impulse. Okay, So given that we know the impulse is minus 10 newtons per second, we can plot, plot that into the formula. Now, what else do we know? We know that the mass of this thing is 2 kgs, and we also know that the initial velocity is positive 4 meters per second. So we can also put that in.
and what you'll find is you get okay so if you were to rearrange it further then you get and if you want to get rid of the 2 on this right hand side here you divide both by 2 so therefore you get negative 1 equals v2 so the final velocity which is v2 is equal to minus 1 meters per second the minus remember is going towards the left hand side that's how we've decided to do it remember so basically you can say 1 meters per to the 1 meters per second to the left or you can just leave it as negative 1 meters per second that's fine as well um, so that would be the um, that would be how you would do it okay um, let's take a look at this right hand side here a bullet traveling at 500 meters per second is brought to rest by an impulse of 50 newton seconds what is the mass of the bullet so, okay well I think clearly we're dealing with impulse equals In uh, final momentum minus initial momentum and so you've got the impulse of 50 and you've got the mass which you don't know you do have the initial velocity and you do have the final velocity the final velocity is going to be zero because it's stopped completely the initial velocity is going to be 500 so now what you have is mass times 500 equals 50 and so if you want to get rid of the numbers and you know divide both by 500 then you can clearly see that 50 divided by 500 is going to give you mass okay um, which will be 0 0.1 kilograms okay uh, so I hope that all makes sense. Um, thank you for watching the video guys. I hope that uh, you found it useful. I will see you in the next video. For those of you that are taking IGCSE Physics or Chemistry, feel free to check out my Patreon channel where I go through uh, exam questions and things of that nature, extra resources to help you get better grades. Um, if there's any questions, just feel free to comment down below. Thank you very much guys.